we're going to show you are the two primary methods of taking a crystal or a gemstone or a simple stone from the yard and making it into a usable piece of jewelry and in this case a pendant without anything else but a diamond drill bit and a bail no casting no fabrication no big money spent you've often heard me talk about how easy it is to do you're going to see exactly how it's done and in today's stones today you get to see two of the most common ones you hear about a tourmaline crystal and an aquamarine crystal today all it's going to take is diamond drill bits but make sure you have enough of the right selections so you can choose wisely look at this this was a sad aquamarine crystal that happened to cleave or fracture right down the middle look at the great color natural color beautiful piece right you think it's ruined uh-uh no it actually is going to be a perfect two-dimensional pendant when we're done we're going to drill the top you can see it has a perfect flat back and a beautiful front visual image so we're going to resurrect that what could have been a potential disaster and turn a pumpkin into a coach we have this beautiful black shoral tourmaline crystal now because you, we work with the flat part against the chest or against the body, right? So it lays right. Well, in the case of a tourmaline crystal, remember, we're working with raw gemstones. If you look at the end of a tourmaline crystal, the direct opposite from the flat side is a point. Well, we can hardly drill through it. And let me get a tool here so we can hardly drill through it in this direction right because you're drilling right on the point and that's what would be required to have the flat part against you so how do we do this well we drill it right in the middle of the crystal straight down and then we'll add this type of finding we'll adhere it with a special type of um, let's just say glue and then we'll attach this bail to that ring. Very simple, very functional, and it's not going to cost a lot of money. To drill a hole in, in any kind of a stone object, they make something called a core drill. That's where the drill is actually hollow in the middle. Very effective for drilling a hole and keeping the um, bit cleaned out and the hole cleaned out from the material that is being drilled and ground up into powder. So though the hole we're putting in the tourmaline is going to be too small for core drill use. What we're going to use is we have a nice solid burr that we have picked out and with it we have created a pan of water and in this case it was just a lid i had from something else nothing fancy we just put enough water in it here and at times you can drill it while it's actually in the water depending on the material or you can just use the water to keep dipping it in there to get the um, cooling factor and to keep the hole cleaned out as well little place there a little mark not very big but i see if that is going to be in the spot that i want it to be and it appears that yes it is so then what i do i make it a little bit more pronounced the next time still going slow because i haven't created a channel yet for that bird to ride in As you can see, it's starting to get more pronounced. Now you're starting to see some material be removed as I get more confident that it is centered where I want it to be. You don't want just dry powder coming off of there though. You can for a moment, but in general, you want some type of 
cooling lubricant. It can be oil depending on the material. All right, so now I like the placement of it and I can feel confident that I can continue drilling it to the depth that I need it to be. When you see me spinning it and rotating it like that, what that is doing is it keeps the drill channel clean. In other words, it allows the powdered tailing, so to speak, to be raised to the surface as you see that it's doing. Now, every now and again, what I'll do is I'll take it to the water, I'll swish it around, and then I'll clean out the drill channel. Oh yes, it definitely exceeds the depth of the finding. All right, that step is over. Now we go to the aquamarine. Being that this is a crystalline piece, you can physically see where the hole is going from the uh, direct frontal image. So it makes it easy to make judgment on whether that's going to center the piece up or not. And I think we're pretty, pretty much spot on here. So I go a little bit further into the process, making sure that still there's enough water. Because the diamonds can be worn off quickly through friction, through too much heat. And it's not that the diamonds wear so much, it's the metal holding them. So once I feel comfortable that our pilot hole has been burred deep enough, then I can go ahead and not worry about centering. I can just worry about drilling. Now, in this case, because it is able to be put down in the water, this is one that I think I'm going to drill while it's in the water and not totally submerged. You'll see how I keep moisture fed to it. Point. Let's check how close we are to going all the way through it because what you don't want to do is punch through the other side at high speed as you risk chipping the surrounding area. It's kind of neat to be able to look at it and see that hole being drilled towards you as I'm going to demonstrate right here. You can see the bit in action so to speak. And there we are. There we have it. Now, with the black tourmaline known as Shoral, with the hole drilled in the middle to the depth that we want, we now are going to take our finding, which are, is a cap with a uh, twisted post, which makes the adhesive adhere and stick better. And all we have to do now is use our, the adhesive of my choice, which is a two-part epoxy. And the five-minute one is fine, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and 
epoxy this in and we'll be right back to you. We've applied our adhesive and now we want to put the cap in the hole, but it's not as simple as you may expect. You want to make sure that the direction of the ring is turned in the direction that you want the bail to go through. So in the direction that you want it to point. So even little differences can make a difference in the end the way it looks. So you want to make sure you position this and that you turn it in the direction that you intended for it to sit. In other words, we wanted it to be against the side that was towards the back. Now, this adhesive, it may be five minutes, but if you're not keeping an eye on it, it will move on you. So we're just going to keep a close eye on it for a moment and make sure it doesn't turn. Then we're going to attach the bale. We've chosen one and that will uh, is thin enough, I hope, to go through that ring. And remember, the point goes forward, so does the bale. And it is simple as that. Then we're just going to use our pair of pliers to close that opening up and we're done. Now, I like to put a little bend in the end of that piece and what that does, it helps assure that it will stay closed more effectively without causing a problem for you and the chain being able to slide through. And there you have it. We can close it in a little bit more if we, you so desire, but for intents and purposes, that is a pendant. Ready to go. That easy. That simple. Gem Shopping Network has just brought you something that you will not see in any format. And this aquamarine as well in another style and format of lapidary skills. Yes, lapidary skills right here. This is how it's done and this is what we can bring you here at Gem Shopping Network and we are happy to show you how it's done on the How Do You series. So thank you very much for watching. Please tell your friends, neighbors, make it a party, get the popcorn out because it's just like a how to show about gardening, about um, woodworking. But this case is something no one else will show you and this is something important that you need to know. How do you? You're gonna run across a lot of items in the jewelry industry and a lot of items that you'll, right here at Gem Shopping. And if you've ever wondered how we created pendants in gemstones, we just showed it to you. Thank you very much. See you again next time.